Oh yeah. So once again, I'm here in front of the camera. And uh, so today is the full moon day. Uh, and uh, as a, you know, the a fully ordained uh, Buddhist monks, when they are in a gather, they should, uh, or they should, you know, have twice a month. Uh, in Tibetan, it is called Sojong. That is literally uh, translate, uh, you know, the purification. There are different translations. So the, you know, the purification, monthly purification, twice a month. One in the full moon day, one in the, uh, what you call the new moon. So today is the uh, full moon, you know, the full moon day. And uh, as a big uh, monastery, we have this, you know, every month, uh, twice a at every, you know, uh, uh, two times it every month. So last one, and this one, this morning, although in the monastery we have, I think fully ordained monks may have a number, at least four and a half thousand monks, not, in, not, not counting those uh, monks who are not fully ordained yet. Uh, yet, you know, the, today only five of us, the Sergei Abbott and me, and uh, uh, Sergei and May, and Sarah May, two discipline uh, teachers, in Tibetan we call Gegur, and uh, the chanting master. So last one, and this today, uh, the Sojong, the monthly, you know, the purification is done by just five of us. So it was a very strange feeling, you know, a very strange feeling. On the uh, uh, first of all, you know, normally uh, when when I walk from here to the main temple uh, for this. Uh, purification twice a month. You know, the, I meet monks along the walking to the mon uh, to the to the temple. Those monks who who are going to join. Uh, sometimes not not uh, not uh, all the time. Occasionally, uh, some monks may talk, but the majority they just run away. <laughs> And uh, so today, last time and today, uh, you know, the, I, I felt very strange walking from here. First of all, you know, the streets are pretty much empty except the ceramic kitchen, the main kitchen the monks were cooking for, break, uh, the cooking uh, lunch. Otherwise, pretty much empty. And when I got there, uh, I think the, the two disciplined teachers who are already there, and we wait just a short moment for Sergei Abbott to come and the chanting master. So, huge hall, and uh, Soundings, uh, soundings are, you know, mentally we know thousands of monks, but couldn't come. Uh, and uh, so, you know, we did the sojong, the purification. And there is a, there is a moment in that, in, in the, during that practice, I mean, the main uh, event during that purification is the abbot, one of the abbot, this uh, Sergei Abbot, 
reciting the you know uh, practice moksha sutra sutra which you know the, mainly to give a little bit of background of the you know the uh, uh, what you call the way that sutra is taught to whom and, and the purpose of the sutra then uh, the main body of the sutra is really and going through the those 250 two or three vows you know one by one section by section by section and uh, but you know before doing it there are uh, different practices are done one of the practice was you know just saying that uh, verse uh, you know reminding the the nature of the impermanence nature of the impermanence many of you people who join his holiness dalai lama's teachings or uh, te uh, gathering in jamyang you know uh, there is a verse saying you know the gamma like star bubble rubbery and so on and so forth you know uh, so reciting that verse list of some you know uh, list of things which are in a very last very short moments and then saying then at the end of the verse saying you know the all uh, compounded phenomena are like that all compounded in the sense phenomena or things and events you know come into being come into existence with the causes and conditions you know so no matter how strong no matter how big no matter you know the uh, uh, you know uh, what, what built uh, you know the, uh, made of what as long as that thing or that event uh, is coming to being due to the causes and conditions, then that thing, that event, is called compounded phenomena in Tibetan duje, duje, dua. You know, come together, come together by the causes and conditions, coming into being, coming into existence. So then that last verse, the last line says like that. And then, you know, we use this, what you call the uh, uh, snaps. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> and that is also one short even one of the, you know, quite often in the classical Buddhist, you know, the uh, texts, uh, you know, when they talk about short events and this, you know, snapping, is one of the uh, 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 frequently uh, used an example. So at the end of that verse, and that uh, we you know snap like this together. So in the normal times, because there are usually two to three thousand monks come together in that. So the, the when at the end of that verse, the whole the the main whole is. You know, uh, what you call the, the what you call the sound of that snapping is very loud because there are you know sec several thousand monks are doing at the same time, and today just there are five of us. So that was very, you know, the my mom uh, sort of extremely, you know, the sense of you know the, yeah that is how the things are. Things are not static, you know. The, uh, uh, the, the a month ago, you know, nobody, nobody in this monastery will think. You know, sojong will take place like this. Just five of us, but last time and today that is happened. So that is one one of my what I have done today. I mean, this is along the things. And uh, yeah, 
one of the things uh, day before, uh, last night, no, night before, uh, the, as I briefly mentioned in my previous recording, you know, the uh, Indian uh, Prime Minister Modi asked the entire, uh, you know, the uh, community in India to come out at night, nine o'clock, switch off all the lights and then hold a candle or any kind of flame that uh, you can and then, you know, to, uh, to do or prayer or anything. So we did that. That was quite something. That was quite something. Uh, you know, the, although, you know, the monastery is not a big city, but nevertheless, you know, it is quite dense, densely populated place. So normally place you know, at night that time is quite, for example, you know, the, the, where I'm living, uh, there are many lights, uh, you know, some are uh, solar panels, some are electricity, but all the electricity are switched off. So it looks quite dark. And uh, of course, we uh, cannot come together uh, as a whole community. And uh, at the, at the, in front of the ceremony, monasteries, main, you know, the, uh, foyer or the front of the main door, and uh, me and the ceremony dis uh, discipline teacher, and uh, some other, uh, some of our uh, administer, administ uh, administrations uh, in charge. So we did nine minutes, you know, holding the candle and doing some short prayer and then short meditation, uh, which was quite something, you know, which was quite something because you feel, you feel you are, you are doing, you know, although it's just prayer and holding candle, but you are doing something for the country, for the millions and millions of people doing together and to do some, you know, at least mentally to bring, you know, uh, sort of what you call the uh, good wishes to everybody. And uh, Sincere thank to the people who work very hard, you know, to to overcome this uh, this virus, uh, problem, uh, difficulty of this virus. So uh, those are the something which uh, quite uh, you know the although standing quite you know for example maybe I'll send you a photo uh, you know the uh, standing in this case in our case only seven or eight of us in this quite big lobby, you know, in front of the main temple. And we are also standing quite distant. The monks are not get used to staying distant. They always stay like that, kind of, somehow, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this time we are forced to stay for distance. So like that in the monastery, I'm sure most of the, particularly the young boys, I'm sure they like doing that because uh, during that period, so they don't need to do their evening recitations. So they enjoy doing that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they were doing it separately and the entire country, it seems. So there, there's some sort of, you know, feeling of doing together. Uh, so that is one thing which I, we, uh, I did uh, in the in last two days. Okay, so today uh, I decided to read a few, uh, you know, nice statements from this book. This book was given to me the, by, I think by Jamyang, when I leave uh, Jamyang in uh, May 2018. 
as a present, I think, or somebody from Jamia. It is published by uh, Buddhist Society. It says selected by the Buddhist Society. So it has, it says, um, 1001 Pearls of Buddhist Wisdom. And uh, so it is uh, nice, there are so many nice uh, statements or quotation by different, not just exclusively Buddhist teachers, you know, there are also uh, non-Buddhists, I think, um, uh, you know, some of ancient Greek philosophers or thinkers, some of, uh, you know, the Western uh, contemporary thinkers or, you know, scholars. So I thought it's quite good to read a few uh, statements and have a little bit, you know, my blah, blah, and that may work. Okay. So, so section that I'm reading from here is the, because they're put in a different section, and this one is called Skills for Life. So that is what, you know, Skills for Life. And the dash wisdom. So they may have different, yeah. And so skills for life and with the wisdom, I think. So the first uh, statement or the first quotation uh, is from a Sri Lankan uh, Bande or monk, uh, Pia Dasi Tara. This Tara, I think, is one of the monk's title in Theravadan, particularly in Sri Lankan Theravadan Buddhist uh, tradition. Um, he already passed away in 1989, 88 he passed away. So, I'll read that. Things as they are, so that's the title, and then his quotation is this. He who understands the true nature of life is the happiest individual for he for he is not upset by filtering nature of things he tries to see things as they are and not as they seem to be so that is very nice uh, relevant you know, sort of uh, wisdom to have, you know, in, gen in general all the time, but also in particularly, uh, you, know, the, uh, this, uh, you know, this difficult time, this challenging time. So the last few times, and also many of you have lots of, uh, and you have received lots of teachings, have read lots of books, and uh, have lots of, you know, the understanding or the knowledge of the, you know, the, the things and events and their nature. And, uh, for example, you know, the, the, I think the first or the second, uh, you know, uh, this series of my blah blah, I touch on saying, you know, the uh, quoting from one or two great Indian masters, particularly, I remember clearly a quote from uh, Dhammakirti, you know, uh, saying, when the, all the causes and conditions are met, then the result is inevitable, cannot be uh, avoided, big or small, individually and collectively. So that kind of knowledge, that kind of understanding, you know, the understanding of the things and events as they are, when that understanding, when the knowledge is there, then, you know, when the good things, very exciting things are happening individually or collectively, you know, the, that person who had the understanding of seeing things as they are, 
then he or she will not be carried by the, this excitement, exciting things. And the same as to when, you know, the things are not going well, like individually and collectively, what is happening uh, right now in the world, you know, the, and it is true happening. It is not just some kind of dream. It is not just some kind of, you know, the uh, scaremongering. It is true, you know, the more than millions of people, uh, one and more than a million people already passed away, I think, or no, is it like that? The number is quite uh, confusing. Uh, so many people died anyway, and of course their families are. So it is happening. But the understanding as it is, you know, will not take away, the, will not change the uh, the, the, the events, what's taking place within us, you know, the, by this virus. Uh, people who are sick, you know, understanding, the, seeing things as they are, will not stop this illness or sickness. Uh, and, uh, you know, the people who are in the intensive care or people who are already passed away, and they will not change, but it will give us the, you know, the, the what you call the, uh, it will not cause us extra burden or extra, you know, the, uh, uh, what you call the difficulties. And that's what here, you know, this great uh, person is saying. Um, yeah. So it says, you know, for he, he is not upset by filtering nature of things. But, uh, you know, he tries to see things as they are and not as they seem to be. So as they seem to be, you know, quite often, for example, you know, the when 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 I lost few two years ago one of my brothers, it was very very painful. It was very very difficult. You know, the out of eight siblings, uh, this brother we you know the, my most of the, my time with my parents. You know, the, uh, this late brother Prabhu is the you know the the that time I had together. So those, that kind of emotions, that kind of thing, you know, then, then you are thinking so many, you know, the past things. You are thinking so many past things and you are also thinking about, you know, the, something, the future, or if we had still here, blah, 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 blah. So all those are the, what, what he is saying, I think, you know, saying that not, uh, not as, not as they seem to be. You know, these are the extra burden, extra, but we, we you know, so like that. And uh, so, you know, the seeing things as they are will not take away the, you know, the pain and difficulties that we are experiencing, but it will give us a good grounding to bring to stability within, and we will not do something, you know, which uh, there's another one which I will read that in relation to that. And this comes from uh, another uh, great thinker. I think uh, he is from America, Henry David Tarot, I think, 1817 to 1862. So he says this, Cautious and calm, that's the statement, and he says this. It is a characteristic of wisdom not to do dis desperate things. And that is what here comes with that quotation. You know, the, if we you know, understand the things as they are, then when the good things come, or when the bad things, sad things happen, we will not do some 
<laughs> desperate things, which you know the and uh, which is the which is the the power of the wisdom. Wisdom will give us that strength. You know, the, uh, wisdom will help us to hold together. And that's really something very useful. And with that, the same, uh, I think, the, uh, what's that one? There's another one. Mm -hmm. the, same, uh, the same person, which uh, I'll read. Uh, that oh, yeah, that same person. Uh, the, that Sri Lankan uh, guy, uh, uh, titled is Heart's, Heart's Wisdom. Knowledge should go hand in hand with the purity of heart, with the moral excellence. And I think I like that very, uh, very much. And this is what we talk uh, Last two are recording mainly, you know, I was keep saying, you know, for example, uh, last recording when I was talking about the four foundation of mindfulness, and within that mainly focus on the last two, and within that the, uh, the third foundation of mindfulness, which relation to the mind. And I was saying, you know, of course, there are many different ways to do that, you know, the uh, mindfulness meditation on mind, you know, there are many uh, famous ones to, you know, to, uh, to observing, simply observing what's going on in, in, a deep, in our thought, in our emotion, in our sensory levels, simply just observing and uh, not challenging, not, you know, doing that and bringing sense of, you know, the stillness, sense of present, sense of full awareness. But I, I, I suggested last time, you know, that maybe this, this kind of time, it may be useful to focus on to bringing love, compassion, altruism, then really dwelling uh, or remain, uh, staying in that level. So, you know, the... Uh, in that characteristic or that kind of mental state. And that is what here, you know, which I thought today, what this guy, this uh, Sri Lankan man is saying, you know, the, uh, the, the knowledge or the wisdom to bring, you know, to support, to nurture by uh, those, those mental states, love compassion and altruism you know what he is saying uh, purity uh, purity of heart with the moral excellence so purity of heart which those mental states love compassion altruism purity in the sense any there's no uh, there isn't any involvement of self centered, you know, self-centered or self-interest with this genuine, sincere, purely, you know, the, even if it is very short moment, purely to uh, thinking about well-beings of others. Uh, it is, uh, it is very moving this, you know, when you, when we watch not all the time i'm not i'm not going to suggest you to watch but occasionally it is good to watch you know some of those uh those video clips you know the uh, recorded by some of those you know the reliable uh what you call the uh, uh those uh, you know people who collect those information it will give us, you know, the sense of humbleness, really. You know, it's just ordinary people, ordinary people. They may have religion, I don't know. 
but they don't talk about religion when they were interviewed, nurses, you know, doctors. They don't say, I do it because of my religion. They just say, because, you know, this is what I'm trained and this is what I love doing it. And this is the time, you know, the, the, the uh, people need me. And those are the really, really moving uh, attitude, very uh, humbling attitude when we talk about, you know, lots of love, compassion, altruism, blah, 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 but uh, not really in a real action. And uh, when these nurses, doctors, and other, you know, people who look after, you know, very sick people, and, and handle some of those family members in a very, very uh, difficult, culturally very, very different, you know, uh, it's, it is uh, more or less universal up to, you know, uh, no, I don't, we don't know how it happened when the Spanish flu struck in 18, in 1918, how the people were caught and how they did it all the, you know, the not to, con, not to, you know, con, uh, 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 catch by the, but now these days when we talk about, when we re read and listen and, you know, uh, because normally when, when, when our loved one is at the last, in their last breath, we all go close, touch, hug, say this. But in this kind of situation, we can't do that. You know, the, we can't do that because of that's the rule set by the medical. And not only, you know, to save us, but also to save more people. And, uh, and, uh, so when they talk about that, then you know the nurses and doctors, how they not only look after the the, the sick people, but also they try to help the families to really to, although it's very hard, very very difficult, but make it make it as easy as possible, as normal as possible. Although normal is not close to that, you no. Know? So that when we look at those things, then what I'm saying here is, you know, uh, that's what uh, constantly we were talking about, you know, the basic human nature. When we face challenge, particularly collective challenge, you know, there's a, this some kind of natural strength, although individually work, you know, but natural strength to work together. And those are the really, what here this master is talking about, pure, uh, pure heart, pure heart. No, not, uh, not involved self-centered or self-interest, but focus. At least the moment where they are taking care of the patient, fully focused to, to look after the patient, if it is possible to cure this illness, if not to keep that person, that patient as comfortable as possible, fully focused on that. And that moment is really pure heart, you know, pure heart. And uh, so like that, uh, that is really something I can't, uh, uh, helpful occasionally to watch, although, you know, sometimes uh, emotionally not easy, not easy, as I mentioned the other day, not easy, but uh, uh, it is, I found it's very helpful to watch, to see the positive side of the human, human beings, because, <clears throat> you know, the, when the, you know, ordinary time, ordinary in the sense when we are, collectively not facing this kind of challenge, challenges. Media and everybody focus on the negative side. Blah, 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 war, blah, blah, corruption. Yes, of course, there are 
they, they are taking place in everyday level. But there are, there are also many positive things taking place, but these are not mentioned. These are not mentioned, these are not discussed, and, uh, but uh, you know, some of those uh, interviews done by some of those reliable you know, the, uh, companies, whatever, is very useful. I found it very humbling to see that, you know, that these are the ordinary, ordinary, ordinary people. As I mentioned, you know, they are not talking about religion. They are not talking about my guru said this. They're just saying, this is what I'm trained, this is what I want to do, and this is, you know, the, the time that I need to do. So that, that is really nice to look at. So pure, pure heart. You know, the knowledge or the wisdom and knowledge should go hand in hand with the pure heart. And that is really, you know, the, those doctors, those nurses, those other, you know, the people who are involved. You know, of course, they have a different knowledge. Doctors have a, you know, different knowledge. Nurses have a different knowledge. People who keep cleaning, they have a different knowledge. But with the knowledge, they work with a good heart, pure heart. And that is really something uh, very nice to, you know, the, to, to remember or to, you know, to, to think about that. Mm. So then, uh, okay, now the uh, last uh, verse that I'm going to read is from uh, Dhammapada, which I thought conclude today with that. So from Dhammapada, it said the, the, you know, the title is said, uh, the rocks immunity, immunity, yeah, immunity. Anyway, the, the actual Dhammapada word, uh, the quotation is this, as a rock remains unmoved by a storm, so the wise man remains un unmoved by praise or blame. And that is really something useful, you know, in this kind of time, this kind of time uh, when we do things, either very small or very big, with our knowledge, wisdom, and with our you know, pure heart, then, you know, the praise or blame will not, you know, the, what you call the, uh, should not uh, change our, our work, which level that we are doing. You know, the wise one or the people who have that kind, wise people, then, you know, even if they are blamed by what they are doing, even if they are praised what they are doing, they do, they, they carry on, they carry on. Unwise one, even if they are doing something good, if somebody blames you, then immediately start to disturb, oh, I might be doing bad things, so I'm, and I'm going to stop and blah, blah, blah. So not to, not to depend on, you know, uh, uh, what you call the um, others' praise or blame. And as long as your intention and with that positive intention, your action is the right action, then, you know, don't worry about but they are receiving praise or blame. So along that, Shantideva said very nicely, you know, uh, in his guide to the Bodhisattva way of life, Dagla Dova Shayuna, Mebe Megar, Mebe Megar Chishu, Dagla Meba Shayuna, Dove Dagar Chishu. So this verse is very nice one. He's saying, some in summary, you know, Why I should, why I should be unhappy 
why I should be unhappy if somebody, uh, you know, they blame me. Because there are people, other people, uh, there are other people who praise me. Therefore, you know, in a, in certain extent, who cares then? Because there are people, some people blame, some people praise. Now, on the other hand, why I should be too hilarious? You know, because people praise me. Why I should be very you know, some people praise me. Why should we be hilarious? Because there are people blame on me. So that's the really nice, I found a very nice one. As long as your intention to act, to do, and the action are the virtues, wholesome, no, not involved self-interest, then play, uh, you know, praising and blaming will not disturb or will not stop your, what you do. And that is the, those wise people will do that. And that's what he, Dhammapada said uh, in this uh, last, uh, the, the last quotation which I did. Okay, I think that might be enough today. You know, if I overload, might be difficult. <laughs> So anyway, anyway, you know, the, it is very, as I said many times, and you all know, it is very challenging time. But it is not, you know, first time this world has seen this. And unfortunately, it won't be the last. You know, there were many, uh, you know, uh, occasions when you look at the history by this, you know, with the, with the different disease. Millions of people were killed in the past. And, uh, and uh, what is happening now is the same. We lost many people alive. Many people have has lost, and I'm sure in the future it may happen. But hopefully, hopefully we will learn in you know, this generation, or as English Queen has said, English or British, I don't know, I get lost this <laughs> in our statement, you know, we will come uh, together and we'll meet something like that. So yeah, we will come, you know, uh, but uh, you know, I think it is, it is hopefully, you know, uh, this generation, uh, what his son Dalai Lama says in you know, the uh, 21st century, people who are born in 21st century, you know, those people will learn something, positive things to do slightly different from the, what the 20th century generation has done. And 20th century generation has done many good things, but some of the yeah, anyway, I will not, I will not say much. <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you, and take care, and see you next time.